Hey everyone, Rayo here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, we make general and PVM RuneScape guides as well as create unique, enjoyable PVM series. Today's video is going to cover RuneScape 3's latest update, the Garden of Karid, giving you all the information regarding the new currency, the Crux of Call favor, how to obtain it and its rewards, as well as other things to help you on your farm runs. Before we get started, make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this. But without further ado, let's get into it. If you've been paying even the slightest bit of attention to the RuneScape subreddit or the homepage, you'll know that today was the release of the Herb Farming Rework, where Jagex replaced herbs from the boss's drop tables with their seed equivalent, reduced them from the slayer drop tables, all in efforts to keep farming herbs relevant to the farming skill itself. In my opinion, I absolutely love the update. I'm a major PVMer, so this does cut into my immediate profits, but RuneScape to me has always been about all the skills alongside PVM. It's what keeps RuneScape a true sandbox MMO where you can do whatever you want. Today's update has had some mixed feelings, but it truly has brought some incredible benefits to the game. Let's cut right to the chase, the herb farming update. The farming update changed the way that farming works, primarily herbs, but there are general quality of life updates that apply to all patches. Your crops can no longer die. They will only become diseased and will stay diseased until you cure them, to which they'll continue where they left off in their growth cycle. This is the same as previously diseased patches, minus the drawback of losing your crop, which results in lost seeds and experience. Your farmer's catalyst fragment from Sliske's endgame will now cure diseased patches when worn and grant shadow-infused herbs when doing so. The miraculous treatment invention item is now the liquid patch bomb, which gathers everything instantly. They've also updated compost bins to store 2,000 of each tier of compost. That's 1k processed compost as well as 1k unprocessed compost. Every 5 minutes, your compost bin will process 3 unprocessed compost from each tier, assuming you have the supplies for such within the bin. On top of that, all compost bins share the same inventory. Gone are the days of jumping between every allotment patch for 15 compost every hour. Now you can use a single compost bin to load up all of your unprocessed vegetation to use on your crops. When it comes to herbs, this area of farming received the biggest tweaks. As mentioned prior, Jagex rebalanced herb drops into seeds, all to make farming the primary source of herbs. There is a new herb patch released with the Garden of Karid, making that a total of 7 normal patches plus the Wildy herb patch. And they've added the ability to plant up to 10 seeds at a time per patch. For those not 100% clear on herb farming mechanics, I'll do a quick breakdown. Prior to this update, each herb seed gave a base of 3 herb lives, which just means 3 minimum picks per patch. Then when you add compost, super compost or ultra compost, you'd add 1, 2, or 3 herb lives respectively, which made 6 herb lives the max possible per patch. This doesn't mean you'll only get 6 picks, this is just the minimum. This amount was then affected by bonuses such as the Master Farmer's Outfit, Magic Sectures, Green Fingers Aura, Farming Juju Potions, and anything else I might have missed. This update though has made it so you can plant multiple seeds into a single patch to raise the base herb lives on a single patch by adding more seeds, capping out at 10 seeds per patch, which would give you a minimum of 15 herb lives or herb picks per patch before you add compost. When adding compost, this is increased up to a max of 18 herb lives minimum. There are of course diminishing returns to the amount of herb lives you get when you add seeds, so if you want more value per seed, you'd only want to plant one seed per patch. But if you want more herbs per run, you'd want to plant the max amount of seeds. I've done a farming run guide on my channel before, so if you want a more in-depth look into my farming runs, I'll put the link to that video in the description and in the card in the top right corner of this video. Now, there is the ability to plant multiple seeds, but this requires the new plant power unlocks from Sidekick's Reward Shop in the Garden of Karid, which uses the new currency, the Crux of Call Favor. The favor is capped at 25k per day, and is earned via farming herbs. The currency amount you get scales based on the tier of the seed that you planted, as well as how many seeds you planted. For instance, Arbuck seeds give a base of 40 points per seed, so if I plant one seed, I get 40 Crux of Call Favor. But if I plant 10 seeds in that single patch, I'll get 400 points. The higher the seed tier, the better the points per patch. Another way to get the most points from your herb seeds is to check in with politics for the herb of the day. Doing so will net you bonus points for using that seed. Sidekick Shop has various rewards, totaling 204,000 favor for every unique reward unlock, or 254,000 if you need the base farmer's outfit. This means it would take anywhere between 8 to 10 days of maxing out your Crux of Call favor to completely buy out the shop. This is quite a lot of favor to obtain, especially if you're using lower tier seeds. Fortunately, if you've done a fair amount of player owned farms, you'll have access to the Leafy Supreme Growth Potions which will instantly grow your crop to full for harvesting. I personally had almost 300,000 beans saved up which allowed me to buy more than enough Supreme Leafy Growth Potions to cap my daily favor. 
My plan is to completely unlock the highest tier of plant power to get the maximum amount of points I can per patch on a farming run. Then unlock the incense stick upgrades to save myself lots of money since I die way too much in this game. Lastly, they added some other benefits for thieving and runecrafting. I won't go in depth with those updates here today, but one important thing to note is that thieving from the new druids gives you the chance to get your hands on the new permanent teleport item, the mythical sand seed, which teleports you directly to the new patch. With all other teleport unlocks, this allows you to teleport to every single herb patch in RuneScape. If efficiency is your game, I highly recommend this teleport. Otherwise, you can choose the other teleport options for the new patch. For information on all of the other patch teleport options, you can check the list on the wiki, or like I said earlier, I've made a farming guide which includes these teleport options for all the other patches, which is linked in the video description. And that's all I have for you today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you have more information on the new update, the Garden of Karid, and have all you need to know to maximize your potential from this update. What do you think of this update? I may personally love it, but I know I don't share everyone's perspective, so I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, follow me over on Twitch, and join my Discord to get notified of any new streams and video releases. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rayo, and I'll see you next time. Take care.